Which is better, the Samsung Galaxy A31 or the Samsung Galaxy A30s? Well, in this video, we're going to find out. What's going on everyone? This is Kevin here, coming at you with my comparison between the Samsung Galaxy A31 and the Samsung Galaxy A30s. Now the Samsung Galaxy A31 was launched earlier this year, and the Samsung Galaxy A30s was launched in September of 2019. So the A31 is the newer phone of the two, which you probably knew that already based off the name. But I'm really curious though to see how much better, if better at all, the A31 is compared to the A30s, especially since the A31 is an extra $50 compared to the A30s. Now that's based off the current prices. Of course, definitely take a look at the links in the video description to see the most up-to-date pricing. But at the moment, you can get the Samsung Galaxy A31 for around $249, and you can get the Galaxy A30s for around 200 bucks. So like I said, a $50 difference. Now both phones are factory unlocked for GSM carriers internationally. So in the US, you can use these with AT&T and T-Mobile and the various carriers under those carriers. Now I've personally used both of these devices with Cricut Wireless and it's been a really awesome experience. Now both devices feature 6.4 inch displays. Both displays are Super AMOLED, but with the Galaxy A31, we're getting a 1080p display, and with the Galaxy A30s, we're getting a 720p display. With the A31, we're getting a PPI of 411, and with the A30s, we're getting a PPI of 268. So certainly, we're getting a higher resolution display with the A31 compared to the A30s. And by the way, if the display looks a little wavier with the A30s, that's because I actually left on the plastic screen protector that comes on the phone pre-installed. So just keep that in mind. But both displays do look good. They have great looking colors, but without a doubt, the A31 does have the better display. In addition to that, with the A31, we're getting an aspect ratio of 20 by nine compared to 19 and a half by nine with the A30s. And then finally, both phones feature an 84.9% screen to body ratio. So you are getting a slightly taller and more narrow design with the A31, but it isn't too different. Now one difference though is that with the water drop notch at the top, it's a little bit more squared off with the A31 compared to the A30s where it's a bit more streamlined. And then at the bottom, both devices do have thicker bottom bezels. Personally, I prefer the design of the A31. I think it looks better with it being a little bit on the boxier side. And it looks like even the corners are a little bit more squared off in comparison to the A30s. But at the same time, I feel like the A30s is still a good looking phone. This form factor certainly is not outdated. And since both phones do have water drop notches at the top, you could argue that they both feature an outdated design now that we're in 2020, especially since it seems like things are really heading in the direction of hole punches for the front-facing cameras instead. Now, speaking of front-facing cameras, with the Galaxy A31, we're getting a 20 megapixel camera compared to a 16 megapixel camera with the Samsung Galaxy A30s. Now, internally, this variant of the Galaxy A31 features 128 gigabytes of storage, and with the A30s, we're getting 64 gigabytes of internal storage. So we are getting half the amount of internal storage. Now both phones, of course, do feature micro SD card expansion. So that is awesome, but nothing can beat having the old school internal storage like we get with the Galaxy A31. So I definitely do appreciate that they are giving us 128 gigs. Now, neither of these two devices feature wireless charging but they do both feature in-display fingerprint sensors. So we'll give this a try first with the Galaxy A31. So nice and quick there. Also, both phones do feature face unlock, which is awesome. But you can see the fingerprint sensor works really well with both devices, so that's definitely a great thing. Now as far as the cameras go, with the A31, we're getting a quad camera setup with a 48 megapixel main camera, an eight megapixel ultra wide angle camera, a 5 megapixel depth sensing camera, and a 5 megapixel macro camera. And with the Galaxy A30s, we're getting a 25 megapixel main camera, an 8 megapixel ultra wide angle camera, 
and we're getting a 5 megapixel depth sensing camera. So there is no macro camera with the A30s. But here's how things look through the viewfinder with both devices. Now we'll switch over to the ultra wide angle cameras and you can see that with both phones you can certainly fit a lot more content into the display. However, the picture from the A31 seems a lot crisper and clearer with better lighting. And in general, I would say that without a doubt, the A31 will give you the better photo and video quality of the two devices. Both devices do give you portrait mode with both the front and rear cameras, which is also very awesome. Now internally, we're getting 4 gigabytes of RAM with both phones, but they do feature different processors. So with the Samsung Galaxy A31, we're getting the MediaTek Helio P65. And with the Samsung Galaxy A30s, we're getting the Samsung Exynos 7904. Now I did run a benchmark test with both phones, and I will show you the results from that right now. But overall, with the devices, I got a score of 149434 with the Galaxy A31. And with the A30s, I got a score of 109. 894. So that's a very dramatic difference in scores here with the two phones. And I'm really looking forward to doing the side by side speed test comparison in a second here. I think that definitely will show off how the A31 does have a more powerful processor compared to the A30s. Now I know that sometimes MediaTek does not have the best reputation ever, but the P65 is a newer processor from the company, and they've really come a long way in a very short period of time. So I think it's actually a good decision of Samsung to switch from their Exynos processors to a Helio processor, at least with this device. It seems to be working out very well. Now video recording with both phones does max out at 1080p, and that is a limitation that both processors give you. So maybe that is one downside with the P65. It would have been cool to see 4K video recording with this phone, but on the other hand, I certainly could live without it. So I'm happy with 1080p, but 4K is just an extra bonus. Now with the A31, we're getting a beefy 5,000 milliamp hour internal battery, and with the A30s, we're getting an also beefy but smaller 4,000 milliamp hour internal battery. So you are getting an extra 1,000 milliamp hours of battery capacity with the A31, and that is extremely impressive. In fact, I don't know of too many other phones out there that do feature a battery as large as this one. Now with both phones, we do have Android 10 with Samsung's One UI 2.0. So you're getting a near identical software experience with the devices. So that's certainly a nice thing to see. I did download a variety of my own applications on these devices so I can test them out as I'm using them to get a good idea of how they work with real life experiences. But now that we've compared the specifications of these two devices, let's get a little bit deeper into the hardware. So they do share quite a few similarities. As I mentioned earlier, you are getting a better display though with the A31 since it is 1080p. Now taking a look at the left side of both devices, they both feature just the micro SD card and SIM card slot. And what's cool with the A31 is that it has a different color here for the band running around the side of the phone. Now this is also plastic, everything's plastic besides the display, but it does look kind of interesting and unique. I think it looks really nice. That being said though, I like the way that the A30s looks as well, and I'm a big fan of this purplish blue color, that's really cool. I don't know of too many budget phones that even come in purple. And taking a look at the right side of the two devices, they both have an identical setup with the volume button and power button. Then on the top, they both have the noise canceling microphone. And then on the bottom, they both have the speaker, microphone, USB-C port for charging and data transfer, and they have the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. So certainly a lot of similarities as far as the ports and buttons go. Then taking a look at the back of both devices, we do have a very minimalist setup considering that there's nothing except for the camera modules, and I certainly like that. That is one of my favorite things with having an in-display fingerprint sensor, besides the fact that it's kind of cool and modern, but I like that it frees up a lot of space on the back of the phones, so it's a very minimalist design. Now we are getting a rectangular camera module with the A31 compared to a bean pod looking camera module with the A30s. I don't really have a preference one way or another. I know there's a lot of people that are very passionate about the way that the camera modules look, but to be honest, as long as they take good pictures, I really don't care beyond that. But maybe you're different? I don't know. Let me know what your preference is in the comments section below. Also, this is what the boxes look like for both devices. I do think it's really cool how Samsung is keeping the A-Series packaging very consistent 
from generation to generation, and it really keeps things nice and organized, especially when they put out so many A-series phones. Which is good for me, because it gives me a lot of work to do here in the channel, but sometimes all the A-series phones can get very confusing. Let's now do a speed test comparison between these two devices. So I did clear out all the recent apps, as you can see. So we're first gonna go to the camera app. So one, two, three, go. And it looks like it was about a tie with both devices. Let's now go to Google Chrome. One, two, three, go. And definitely the A31 was quicker at pulling up Chrome, which is pretty interesting. Let's next go to ESPN.com. One, two, three, go. And it looks like content did pop up a little bit quicker on the A31, but not too far behind with the A30s. So that is interesting that despite the A30s having a bit of a lower benchmark score, it does seem to be keeping up very well. Let's go to Engadget.com. One, two, three, go. And it looks like the A31 was a bit faster at pulling up Engadget. Scrolling is very smooth on both phones. Looks like it is a little bit smoother though with the A31. We'll go to the top of the page on both devices. Whoops. Let's go to this article right here. One, two, three, go. And it looks like it was very close there but it does also look like the A31 was slightly faster. But you can see both displays look fantastic, so you're gonna get good viewing angles with both phones. Both look very crisp and clear, so I'm happy with them both in general. So in conclusion, which phone is the better choice of the two? Well, certainly the A31 is the better phone in all ways. There's really nothing about the A31 that makes it a downgrade from the A30s. Of course, we're getting a bigger battery, we're getting twice the amount of internal storage, we're getting better cameras, we're getting arguably a better processor, we're getting a better display, and I also like how we're getting kind of more squared off corners here with the device compared to the A30s, but that's a personal preference. So yeah, everything with the A31 is better compared to the A30s, like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, but the real question is, how much better? And is it worth paying a premium to get the A31? Also keep in mind that there's a lot of places where you can buy an A30s used right now. For example, you can go on eBay and get it used, and you can't find as many used A31s because it's a newer device. So for me personally, I think it is worth the extra $50 or so to get the A31, but if you have to pay any more than $75, then I would certainly get the A30s instead. But at the end of the day, I think both are very good options. I think you'll be happy with either one, and they'll at least last for several years, which is the typical lifespan of a budget phone before people get a little tired of it and are ready to get something new and fresh. But I hope you enjoyed this video here comparing the Samsung Galaxy A31 to the Samsung Galaxy A30s. Let me know what you think in the comment section below, and take a look at the links in the video description to see the most up-to-date pricing for both devices. But my name is Kevin, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.